Hey guys, what's up? Today we are looking at integrating a vector function and that vector function is actually going to require us to use a couple of different techniques of integration and the vector function we're trying to integrate here is t squared i hat plus t times square root of t minus 1 j hat plus t times sine of pi t k hat dt from 1 to 2. So integrating a vector function really just requires you to integrate each piece over that domain. So basically the integral is going to become the integral from 1 to 2 t squared i hat dt plus integral from 1 to 2 t times square root of t j hat dt and then integral from 1 to 2 t sine pi t k hat dt. So basically just integrate each piece over that interval. So we really just have to integrate three different pieces. So the first piece we have to integrate is actually pretty easy. So this is just a polynomial um, t squared from 1 to 2. So integral from 1 to 2 t squared dt is going to be pretty easy. It's just t cubed over 3 from 1 to 2. And that's pretty easy. We say 8 minus 1 all over 3, which is 7 thirds. So actually the first part of our answer up here we could just say is uh, 7 thirds i hat. So that's actually the easiest part. Um, the next integral is a little bit interesting. It's integral from 1 to 2 of t square root of t minus 1 dt. And this one is actually not too bad once you see the trick. And the trick here is to let u equal t minus 1. So we'll do a u sub for this integral. u equals t minus 1. And then du will be dt. Well, that's okay. That becomes square root of u, but I still have a t here. Well, t is equal to u plus 1. Okay, that's cool. So I can substitute that in, but what about my bounds? Do I want to change the bounds? Well, sure. So my new bounds, well, I plug in t equals 1 to this substitution. That becomes u equals 0. So my bound 1 becomes the bound u equals 0. And the bound 2 is going to become the bound for u. It's going to become the bound 1. So actually my new integral in terms of u is the integral from 0 to 1. So I change these t bounds to be u bounds. So I plug those bounds into my substitution and see what they turn out for u. So this is going to be u plus 1 and then square root of u, well, I could just write that as u to the 1 half, which is actually preferred in this case. So this is the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. All right, so integrating those two pieces right there is not too bad. Um, just add 1 to the power, get 5 halves, multiply out front by 2 fifths. And the same thing here, do 3 halves, 2 thirds, and we get the integral is going to be 2 fifths u to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 0 to 1, because we changed our bounds to be in terms of u. So now if I plug in 1 for u, that's going to be 1 regardless of the power. So these are both just going to give us a 1 when I plug in u equals 1 right there and right there. If I plug in u equals 0, they're both 0. So actually this turns out to be pretty easy to evaluate. We just get 2 fifths times 1 plus 2 thirds times 1 minus 0 minus 0 because when I plug in 0, it's nothing. So um, let's see, 2 fifths plus 2 thirds turns out to be 16 over 15 after I find a common denominator. So 16 over 15 right there. And then we'll add that up here to our solution. So plus 16 over 15 j hat. And now all we have left to do is find the integral of t sine pi t from 1 to 2. So integral from 1 to 2 t sine pi t dt. Now the integral here is going to require uh, integration by parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tabular method for integration by parts. I'm going to do u and a dv 
And you can do a single integration by parts. You get the same thing. So just do whatever you do for integration by parts. I'm going to do it right here. Um, sine pi t. Now I differentiate u all the way down to 0 for a polynomial. And integrate over here. So negative 1 over pi cosine pi t. And 1 over pi squared. Negative 1 over pi squared. So that's a weird number. Sine pi t. All right, so now this integral turns into my integration by parts tells me it's going to be negative t over pi cosine of pi t plus 1 over pi squared sine of pi t. Again, if you go through the integration by parts all the way, you'll see that you get the same thing right here after you do both integrals, or after you do the last integral there. Now we need to plug in our bounds from 1 to 2. So now plug in the bounds from 1 to 2. This is going to be negative 2 over pi cosine of 2 pi, which is 1, minus minus is plus 1 over pi cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So that's just plugging in the bounds to the first term. Plus 1 over pi squared sine of pi which is or sine of 2 pi which is 0 minus 1 over pi squared forgot my square here times sine of pi again which is 0 so those two terms actually go away there's 0 the last term then that's left is negative 2 over pi minus 1 over pi so actually we get negative 3 over pi k hat as our answer and that is the solution so that's how we do it that's our final answer for this integral of a vector function